everybody. I hope that your day is going well so far. It is Friday morning, day two of stage two for me on the GAPS protocol. Um, it's been good so far. I actually woke up this morning and I felt really clear and bright and energized, which is not uncommon for me, but it felt a little bit more. So I actually still feel really full from my soup last night, which sounds kind of crazy because it was just a big giant bowl of soup, but I am gonna be not having my soup this morning, mostly because I have to run out the door to go to my office. <laughs> but I am going to be making an extra um, strong version of my ginger tea. So I've had my ginger tea steeping over here on the stove for a while, so it's got a really lovely, rich flavor, but I'm gonna add a whole bunch of extra coconut oil to my tea this morning. Still the same little amount of honey, but I'm gonna add probably two tablespoons or so of the coconut oil. So that's gonna to help to keep my blood sugar stable, keep my mood stable, my mind going in the right direction, as in mental clarity and no brain fog, any of that, uh, until I can come home. So I have a couple of clients this morning. My Friday mornings are my shortest day, mostly because I usually have paperwork to do after all of that, you know, from the week ahead, so, or the week before. So I'm gonna go see my couple of clients and drink my wonderful tea. I love this mug and I'm sorry if I've talked about this before but this is my favorite all-time mug to keep things hot it is about whoop, I just spilled some water there <laughs> um, I think it's 16 ounces yeah it's 16 ounces so it's nice size and it keeps stuff hot forever it is from Starbucks I don't know if you can see the little logo right there um, and I bought it several years ago and it's been fantastic the lid seals entirely so you twist it open to get your drink out and when you twist it closed it causes a seal all the way around the top and it's double walled so it just stays super super hot which is my favorite when I'm traveling uh, especially if I'm using this as kind of like a meal supplement with good food that I want to keep it hot for a long time like this ginger tea so I'm gonna use that and we're gonna get ready to go um, so I'll see you guys. I might do a little clip from my office. Um, otherwise, I'll see you when I come back this afternoon where I will be making my next pot of soup. So I just use two of these little quarters here for my tea and I'm not gonna put it directly in here. I'm gonna put it into the tea kettle on the stove. So this has been simmering here on low, ooh, that's really hot, um, with my ginger inside the tea basket, which you can kind of see here. And I'm just gonna add some lemon to it as it's staying really warm. And I will put that right into my tea kettle and head off to my office. Okay, we're in the car, we're going to work, and we'll have a good time. It is freezing for being the end of April. I just have to say, I am very unhappy with this. It's 37 degrees right now, according to my car um, thermometer, and it should not be 37 degrees in the end of April. Where's the sun? Okay, that's not a bad phrase. <laughs> the sun is beautiful and out and shining, it's just chilly. So I am looking forward to when the weather breaks and turns nice and warm. I am a California girl, grew up in Sacramento, California, and um, it's definitely not 37 degrees there in the middle of end of April. So that's all I have to say about that. So while I'm driving to my office, I also kind of wanted to clarify some thoughts for you guys. I didn't have time to do this in my house before I left, so I figured I would just mention it here while I'm driving. Um, I really love the idea of listening to your body. That's where I'm not a huge fan of someone who says, okay, just skip meals here and there and, and do that. But like, if you're, if you're not hungry, don't force yourself to eat. Your body knows when it needs sustenance and when it doesn't. So I skipped my breakfast this morning and I'm having my um, ginger tea with coconut oil. So there is still some nutrition in that. There's still some calories there, some fuel for the body. A little bit of honey mixed in, so you got a little bit of glucose, but mostly medium chain fatty acids. That's what coconut oil is primarily made up of MCTs medium chain triglycerides, which are fantastic because they bypass the need of digestion from the gallbladder, from liver gallbladder. 
And if any of you guys know me in person, you hear me talk about gallbladder health all the time. <laughs> your gallbladder is super important to help you digest your fatty acids. Your liver makes this great substance called bile, and bile gets stored in the gallbladder. Your gallbladder is kind of like this little water balloon that holds the bile until you need it. Now, bile is released into the digestive process in the presence of dietary fats. So when you eat healthy fats, your liver will say, hey, gallbladder, squash that beautiful bile out into the digestive tract so you can emulsify your fatty acids. Um, but coconut oil is beautiful because it's a medium chain triglyceride MCT that are primarily made up of MCTs. So it helps you, you can, you can digest it, you can absorb it more easily without having to go through the whole entire digestive process. So it's awesome to help stabilize energy pretty quickly. Anyway, all that to say, I, I'm a huge fan of listening to your body. And if my body says I don't, um, stop, 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 wait, so my hands are off the <laughs> wheel. Um, I don't need to eat food right now this morning. That's okay. I'm going to listen to it. Now, I probably will be pretty hungry for lunch by the time I get home around 1 o'clock. But that's all right. I'll just keep plugging along and do what I need to do um, and listen to my body and let it do its thing. It's also very normal when you're beginning a healing process, something like this GAPS pro protocol, for your to find fluctuations in your appetite and um, the way that you're kind of like experiencing food. So it's totally normal to have that happen. And as your body is healing and absorbing and utilizing nutrients more effectively, you're gonna find sometimes, a lot of times, that you need less volume of food to feel full and satiated and um, you know ready for the day because your body says, okay, I can burn this more effectively. I can burn this more usefully to me. It's not just like you're eating some of your food and um, passing the rest of it through your system. I say this all the time, you could eat the best diet in the world, you could take the best supplements in the world, but if you can't digest, absorb, and utilize those nutrients, then it's really not helping you very much. Your body still doesn't know what to do with it. That's why I am all about gut health and keeping your body in tip-top shape for digestive um, support, and um, it's all good. It's all good. It's all part of the process, and I'll keep you guys up to date and take you along for the ride. We have arrived at my office, everybody. So now I'm getting my office set up for our clients. I have a little diffuser that I use for essential oils and it's actually pretty cool. It is um, the Aria diffuser from Young Living. So right now I have been completely obsessed with the blend of, I'll show you, see if I can show you here, tangerine and spearmint. These two have been fantastic little, very fresh, very welcoming, very inviting, a nice little blend here to diffuse my office. I try to keep things fairly neutral um, for people, so if there's, you know, sensitivities and things. I'm leaving my office now. Had a great day with my clients. It is just after one o'clock. I was finishing up some paperwork, but the internet was going slow, so I'm just going to back to my house and finish my paperwork there. Um, where I know my internet is nice and stable and I can keep doing my notes for people and write down my um, recommendations. I'm almost done with my ginger tea. I didn't quite finish it. I still feel pretty good. I'm getting a little bit hungry now where I definitely will be happy to eat my um, soup when I get home. So I'll do that and then we will start discussing the next thing that I have planned for um, my menu. So my next soup recipe that I'm going to do. I'm very excited and I have a couple of options, so um, I will see, I'll take you along for the ride to see which items I choose for my next meal. Made it back home. I hope you enjoyed seeing Gus walk from the car. He's so much fun. Whenever I um, open the door, he has to wait. He knows. And if you say, okay, he doesn't jump out. If you do the hand signal, which is just this to come jump out of the car, he won't jump out. You have to do them both at the same time. And he knows, otherwise he waits. And then it's his favorite thing ever to run back to the front door <laughs> as soon as we get out of the car. So Gus just had his first meal of the day. I just gave him his um, raw food, which like I said, we'll do another video at another time on raw feeding. And now I'm gonna have my first meal of the day. It's 1.15 here, and I'm gonna heat up my last bowl of soup before I make my next batch. So 
Soup is heating up. Gus is playing outside. He loves to play and run around for that ball. He's so funny because he doesn't watch where you throw the ball. If you saw in that last little video clip, you throw the ball, he just starts running in that direction and hoping that it, you're gonna throw it that way. <laughs> Sometimes I turn around and I throw out the opposite direction. He looks around, where is it, where is it? And then he has to run back and find it. But he is very good with his nose. Gus is a Lagoto. If you've never heard of a Lagoto, you're not alone. It's a very uncommon breed here in America. It's an Italian water dog and they are primarily nowadays used as truffle hunters. So some of you may have seen the AKC special that came in about Lagotos and truffle hunting. The full name is Lagoto Romniolo and um, he is really good with his nose. So I'll throw that tennis ball, I'll toss that off into the in the yard with like five other tennis balls around and he will bring me back that exact tennis ball because that's the one I touched. That's the ball. If you say go get the ball, none of the, there could be five other tennis balls sitting right there in vicinity and he could easily pick that up and play with you, but no, he's gotta go for it, the ball, the one that you touch, the one that smells like you, that's the ball. So he's having a ball <laughs> outside playing right now. My soup's heating up over here in the kitchen and I'm just gonna sit down and finish a little bit of my paperwork while I eat my soup. Um, I added my egg yolk and my um, probiotic liquid, the juice from my sauerkraut already in a little dish, so I didn't show you me separating that this time around. And I'm just gonna add that to the soup once it's ready to go into my bowl. And um, I'll grab my cookbook here in a couple minutes and we'll start figuring out which recipe I wanna make next. I finally decided on what meal I'm gonna make today. So it is about four o'clock now. I've been doing some video editing. I'm not very good at it yet, so bear with me. I'm learning and I will get better and better over time. So I'm doing a daily vlog. I've got a lot of days here where I can get some practice. So I decided that I'm going to make the ground beef stew, mostly because I have all the ingredients already to make it. So here we go on my lovely little handbook guide, page 62 of the Heal Your Gut cookbook. Um, and it's pretty nice. Beef stock, onions, celery, carrots, lard or tallow, some other kind of cooking fat, ground beef, rosemary, thyme, sage leaves, a bay leaf and sea salt. So right now in stage two, you can't have uh, all the herbs themselves. You can put them in as flavoring and then you take them back out. So I'll just be using a little, I don't have fresh, it calls for fresh, I have dried. So I'm just gonna put it into a little tea strainer and let it sit and then I'll just pull that right out so I don't have any of those herbs actually in the soup um, or stew, I guess. So I'm gonna make this and hopefully my husband will enjoy it as well. It's kind of like chili. It basically is like a little bit of a soupy sort of chili. So what I'm gonna do is make it with a little bit less stock than it calls for so that Jeremy can then add spices to it so he can have his chili and then when I eat it, I'll just add some extra liquid with my broth. I have broth in jars, so I'll just add some more liquid and make it more brothy. I shouldn't say broth, I should say stock. Make it a little bit more stocky <laughs> for myself, um, which I think it'll work out really nicely. It's it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be to balance Jeremy's tastes and my tastes for dinner. He might say he needs a little bit more sustenance, that's okay. He can just add some things to the side, crease as I move along the way too. And if you haven't noticed, I've definitely changed into some more comfy clothes out of my work clothes for the day. Although I am going back to the office, I have another client coming in at um, in this evening. So I'm gonna go and see this person for a little bit and then come back in time for a family dinner. I don't know that I'm gonna have enough time to go get started on this meal right now. I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm about, you know, maybe half an hour before I have to leave. The real trick is going to be whether or not my ground beef is thawed. I've had it out on the counter for a couple of hours and then I ran some water over it to try to get it to thaw a little bit more. So we'll see. <laughs> if it's thawed, I will be taking you along for the video. If not, then we'll have to do it after I get back from the office again later this evening. But I think it's gonna be pretty good. I'm excited and I love that in the book they give you variations. They can say when you're in this stage, do this. When you're in st this stage, do that. So you can still use the same basic recipes. The other thing I think is awesome is that the recipes are simple. They're not complicated. I've done a lot of different protocols where you have to buy 50 ingredients for one recipe and it's like, oh my Lord, am I ever gonna buy all that? Am I ever gonna use this ever again? Probably not, or very rarely, like, and then it goes bad and 
Anyway, these recipes have been great. And I, I also want to say I don't have any sort of affiliation with these people. I don't know them at all. They have no idea who I am. I just really enjoy their book. I think it's a nice collection of recipes and it's a really nice little hand guide to help people get through this GAPS protocol. So I will see you in a bit when I get started in the kitchen and hopefully it'll be now. Hopefully you'll go over there and things will be thought enough to get started. But otherwise I'll just have to get it cooking when I get back. Well, it is now 10 o'clock at night. We have had family dinner and I came back from work and it was a little bit longer time at my office than I thought it was going to be originally. So I did not make it home in time to make my soup and I just made it home. I was a little bit late for family dinner. So uh, I didn't get to do that tonight and I didn't pick up the camera. It's, I'm still kind of new to the vlog thing. So maybe later when I'm a little more established and they kind of understand the process, I'll pick up the camera and show a little couple of clips from family dinner. I kind of like to be engaged and present with where I'm at so I don't want to have to um, pick up the camera and do some stories along the way. So tomorrow I will make my actual ground beef stew and you guys will be able to follow me along. I'll show you the whole process and take you step by step and we'll make a really nice little treat. But for now, I will say thank you so much for following and listening today and I hope you have a wonderful evening. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.